Welcome to the Ecosystem Podcast. I'm Sash Mukherjee, Principal Analyst at Ecosystem, and it is an absolute pleasure today to be in conversation with one of the first analysts to join the Ecosystem family. Uh, Kaushik Ghatak is no stranger to the tech world here in Singapore. He has been leading conversations around transformation for over 25 years now, and has worked for large tech firms such as Oracle, SAP, and IBM. He's also what I like to call him a supply chain guru. Kaushik, welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Sash. <laughs> Thank you for the kind introduction, and it has been a pleasure associating with ecosystem. Yeah, it's the pleasure has been ours as well. So, Kaushik, just, just let's get started on the conversation because we want to keep it kind of brief. Um, in your recent blogs and reports, including the one that you posted yesterday on the retail industry, you mentioned that we will see a lot of realignment in business requirements and spending in the days to come. And this realignment will open up newer opportunities for technology providers. So how, according to you, should they position these tech vendors how should they position their products and services? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, uh, Sash. And uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, the tech vendors, they need to really position their technology solutions in the context of the value that they can uh, bring to the business. Uh, unless, uh, because most of the decision making going forward uh, and even now is being taken by business line of business stakeholders and mm -hmm. technology vendors have to make them more and more relevant to these uh, line of business stakeholders. Right. So uh, when you're talking about, so could you just elaborate? So you were talking about the concept of value selling. Yeah. So uh, could you just elaborate a little bit more of what you mean by like selling value, like explaining to the, LOB, is it? Because they have traditionally always spoken to IT. Is that what you're trying to say? Right. So, you know, in a, in a sense, value selling is among the most cliche term used in the technology sales <laughs> world today. Yeah. yeah. If you're in a sales or marketing role, you probably have got used to hearing prescriptions and sometimes very strong directives that yeah. you need to understand your customers. You need to relate to their world and you have to articulate business value of your products and services. Yeah. But then, you know, the... Uh, you keep wondering as a salesperson, but the customer is always asking about the price. Uh, mm -hmm. And when was the last time when you were in the sales cycle where the customer started the discussion uh, with uh, the question, what value do you bring to the table? So, yeah. uh, so, you, uh, so on, uh, in many cases, even the customers are not prepared to think value and that puts a bigger onus on the tech vendors to start the conversation from a value perspective. Right. So that's exactly what I was going to ask you next. Like, and I'm sure, you know, many who are listening in today might wonder if this, you know, the value selling, if it actually works in real life. And I also know that you, a lot of what you are talking about, you know, when you are actually talking about value selling, even though you mentioned that it's a cliche, you are basing it on real life experience from your days in the large vendor organizations. So for the audience, can you just give us a glimpse of how value selling works, uh, you know, uh, in real life from your own experience? Yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, you know, while I say value selling is a cliche term, I have worn formal value seller hat in SAP and Oracle and uh, to some extent in IBM. And uh, I've had this opportunity of understanding, you know, uh, and articulating uh, and selling business value uh, to the customer from the front line, you know, over the last 20, 25 years. Uh, so, uh, so maybe, you know, uh, a story always helps. So uh, instead of yeah. talking about my experiences, let me tell you a story. Sure. Uh, this was a few years back and, uh, in, I was with one of these technology companies and you mentioned SAP, Oracle, IBM. And um, we were in a meeting with the head of HR of a telecommunications company. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were trying to convince her to partner with us for developing a three-year technology roadmap, a roadmap for HR solutions for her company. She was an extremely clued in executive. And she was trying to understand how IT solutions could help her address the challenges of employee productivity, employee engagement, and talent management. And 
you know, on, from our side, we were explaining the breadth and depth of our HR solutions and giving references to other telcos who have adopted our solutions. But our technical explanations were not helping much and the discussion was not going anywhere. She was not really getting convinced that it was a good idea to bring in our team to help them develop a technology roadmap. So, you know, as the discussion was going on and I was listening to and participating in the conversation, in parallel, I was furiously thinking of how I could explain the concepts in simpler terms. And uh, that's when I thought of, uh, you know, the book, uh, Start With Why uh, by Simon Sinek, where he talks about establishing the core reason of doing anything at all. Uh, the, uh, you know, the business case for any change is that why, why should I be doing anything at all? And in that book, he had written about brand leadership, brand value, and how leaders communicate using this principle. I had loved it. So sitting there in the meeting, I started wondering, uh, could I apply the same framework to articulate value of information technology to this HR executive? It dawned on me that for this HR executive, her worldview was from inside out. Her key challenges in terms of employee productivity, employee engagement and talent management were the whys for her, the reasons she needed to do anything at all. These were her value drivers. And for each of the whys, she would like to know how IT solutions can help and then get to the what in terms of the specific IT solutions that we could provide. And only then we could get to the table in terms of, you know, working with her to develop a technology roadmap. But on the other hand, um, you know, what our team was doing, including me, uh, our world's view was until then a very outside in. We were explaining the what's first, the breadth and depth of our HR solutions, the different modules. And then we talked about how each of these modules would address typical challenges in the HR domain. And uh, in essence, we were doing a classic product pitch and in the process, losing her. There's this big disconnect. So we changed track and whiteboarded an inside out discussion by taking each of the challenges, the whys, and demonstrated how a state of the art HR system can address these challenges and only then getting to what HR solution modules would provide those capabilities. We had much better result. Yeah, that's, that was a very interesting perspective, Kaushik. But um, uh, many you know, sellers of technology out here, uh, they have a particular technology mandate, right? So in your experience, for example, if you take one a technology area, let's take IoT, like how would they you know, apply this concept of value selling to IoT? Sure, sure. And uh, IoT is a, is a fantastic example because uh, it renders itself in so many ways to improve business value. Uh, so uh, let me give an example again and, uh, you know, uh, let me elaborate it through a, a possible scenario. Uh, so in the space of IoT, as you know, is uh, the technology vendors in IoT, they are really diverse and you know some of them are working on iot platforms some of some people are working on iot analytics and so on and so forth right so think of you know let's talk about uh, think of a ceo a ceo is uh, he knows that uh, the iot is uh, it has potential to make his business smart but uh, in terms of providing visibility in terms of you know uh, bringing in almost real time data and he's hearing so many things from different companies and he's confused. So a good way to start a IoT discussion at the CEO level or at, at any CXO level would be in terms of where this company is going in terms of, you know, their uh, business models. Uh, where are the competitive pressures coming from and what are the specific requirements around business performance improvement. So again, you see, start with the why. What do they need to do in terms of business and why do they need to do it? And it could be that, let's say, a CEO of, of a food and beverages company, and he needs to rapidly move into new markets and also get a really good handle on his cost structure. 
And then you can start talking about, well, if you really want to get into new markets and get into your cost structure, you need to have better control on your processes and you need to have a really good visibility of what's happening on the ground. And the uh, today's technology in form of the whole IoT stack helps you do that. Connect your complete you know, enterprise right from the ground level, along with your trading partners, such as distributors, as well as the suppliers you may have to provide you a complete visibility of what's happening on the ground so that you can get uh, a real time view and uh, you can use that analysis in your planning to make your planning and exhibition process really, really efficient and effective. Now that is a discussion that a CEO will understand rather than saying that our IoT platform is the best of breed and you know, we have done uh, so much work in so, with so many other customers in so many different countries. Those are useful, but bring that on later on. Tie in the CEO first from his point of view, from his point of interest and not yours. Uh yeah, so I've always told you that you are a great storyteller. You're a story storyteller first and everything else afterwards. And you didn't disappoint me this time either. You made it sound all very simple. So uh, before I let you go, um, what is the one word of advice that you would like to share with sales and marketing and tech vendor organizations based on what you have said, if you were to give them, you know, a pithy advice? Sure. Uh, you know, Simon Sinek's book saved us that day. And since then, I have consistently used this simple framework reasonably successfully to explain the concept of value in the context of information technology. And also, this framework is flexible enough to be adapted to not only an HR executive, but to a supply chain executive or a CFO or the CEO. And the one word of advice that I would have for the technology vendors based on my experience is that a technology investment discussion that does not start with why technology is doomed for a quick death. It's wonderful. So thank you so much, Kaushik, for speaking with me today. And thank you all for listening in. Uh, please log on to the ecosystem platform for Kaushik's blogs and reports and for our market-driven data insights and content. Till next time.